There isn't a meal prep for fresh, homemade pizza. That is ridiculous. Let's get into it. Fresh yeast risen dough is usually the barrier in which beginner or even intermediate cooks shy away. I made this pizza dough so easy that anyone can do it and it involves nearly zero work or time. Grab a food processor, put it on a scale, and add 500 grams AP flour, 100 grams vital wheat gluten, 10 grams salt, and 5 grams of yeast. Blend these ingredients together for 30 seconds and while that is blending, fill up a cup with 440 grams of water. Temperature doesn't matter here unless it is a above 110 degrees, which we want to avoid. Turn your blender on high and slowly mix in the water over 30 to 60 seconds. Once all the water is poured, I like to let it go for an additional 30 to 60 seconds or so. You might want to hold your processor down so it doesn't go flying off the counter. Speaking of, what if you don't have a food processor? I'm glad you asked. Put all of your dry ingredients into a bowl, whisk them together, and add your water. Using a spoon, mix everything together until it looks like this. Using a soaking wet hand, get all of the dry ingredients incorporated. Cover for 15 minutes. The last thing we have to do is a simple stretch and fold. Get your hand wet, pull once, twice, a third time, and lastly, a fourth time. Flip your dough over, round it into a ball, and plop it onto your work surface. That's it. This will take you an extra five minutes of work tops versus the food processor, and I like to think of it as one extra minute per day for fresh pizza. Whether you made your dough in the food processor or by hand, once finished, plop your dough onto your work surface and form it into a ball. Divide the dough into five roughly 200 to 210 gram pieces. Grab five high-sided containers and lightly spray oil into each one so the dough doesn't stick. Take each piece of dough, flatten it a bit with your fingers, bring the edges in, flip it over, and move the dough in a circular motion in between your hands to close the bottom of the dough. This will take one or two balls to get the hang of it, but once you do, it is super simple. To be honest, the ball doesn't even really need to be sealed since it is going to spread out on its own during the cold fermentation and eventual rise it will get once you are ready to cook with it. Put each ball of dough into the container, give it a quick oil spray on top, cover with a lid, and store in the fridge. Pro tip. I like to put a piece of masking tape on my lids and date them so I know exactly how old they are. You can store these in the fridge up to a week and they actually get more flavor over time. If the end of the week approaches and you know you can't finish them all, you can put any extras in gallon bags, spread them out a bit, and throw them into the freezer. Then grab a dough, throw it on the counter about an hour before you are ready to eat, and it will be ready to go as good as new. You can speed this process up by flipping your dough halfway through. Shout out to Adam Ragusia on the tip for that one. For now, if you want a pizza from the dough you just made, keep one of the containers out while we make our sauce as we will use it in about an hour or so. Speaking of, a close second barrier to entry is making your own pizza sauce. I abolish those walls by using three ingredients and a spoon which comes together in seconds. A high quality crushed tomato is important here and this is one area of the recipe where I don't mind forking out a little bit of extra money. Without a good tomato, we don't have a good sauce and we want the Lumalnati's of meal prep not the Chuck E. Cheese. For this, we will use Cento crushed tomatoes. The great thing about crushed tomatoes is that we have a pizza sauce consistency upon opening the can and all we have to do is add our dry ingredients. Straight into the can, add 1.5 grams of garlic powder and six grams of salt. You will have to adjust the salt levels to your liking, but that's okay because the six grams of salt costs less than a penny either way. So once you reach your ideal taste, mix everything together and dump it into a container. Again, I like to tape it and date it. And in about 45 seconds, you have a week's worth of pizza sauce and enough extra for anything else you may need a fresh sauce for. What comes to mind is spaghetti or dipping sauce for my one hour breadsticks that are better than Olive Garden's. The toppings couldn't be more simple. Cheese. Since we only have one topping, we need to make it count. I have always preached to shred your own cheese, but now it is more important than ever. If you spend the extra five to 10 minutes to shred some fresh, part skim low moisture mozzarella, I promise you will thank me later. It has been just over an hour since we finished meal prepping our dough and it is time to eat some pizza. While undergoing several tests, it was clear any oven safe pan would work. To my surprise, while the top on both looked identical, the bottom actually browned better on a nonstick pan. In hindsight, this does make sense because the heat is conducted much quicker through the thin nonstick versus the thick and heavy duty cast iron. Either way, they both tasted delicious and 
and you can't go wrong. Now, whatever pan you do choose, try and make it a 10 incher. However, if yours is smaller, that's okay. You will just have a thicker dough and cheese layer, which some people might prefer. On the other end of the spectrum, if it is 12 inches, it will be very thin, think Jack's frozen pizza, and will have a spottier cheese layer. Spray some oil onto your pan as well as your hands. The oil on your hands will also help you spread this dough out. Plop your dough into the middle of the pan and start pressing it out evenly. This will likely take two to three minutes, but don't worry, you have almost arrived to pizza time. If your dough keeps snapping back, which happens from time to time, cover it up and let it sit for 10 or 15 minutes. When you come back to it, you will see the dough has relaxed and you can shape it as you please. Put your sauce on a scale and take out 80 grams. Spread the sauce evenly with a spoon. If you prefer a crust, spread the sauce about a half inch from the end of the pie. I prefer having a pan pizza with sauce throughout, so that is what I'm doing here. Then put your cheese on the scale, take out 60 grams, and spread evenly over over the pizza. Throw it into a preheated 425 degree oven for 12 to 14 minutes or until golden brown. And make sure you check the bottom. It should look like this. If it isn't, but your top is ready, you can put your pizza on the stove top and let it cook for an additional minute or two. This will only cook the bottom and you can really dial in your crust preference. This is how I like my final pizza to look. But again, you can cook it a little less or more to get it exactly how you want it. If you are making the pizza from dough in the fridge, all you have to do is take it out about two hours before you want to eat. That's it. For example, you are about to hit the gym. Get some of the world's best pre-workout ready. Cody for cm saves you 10% off your order. And put your dough on the counter before you walk out the door. Then when you get back from the gym with a massive pump and empty stomach, you can repeat the same process we just outlined and you will get a perfect pizza every single time. You can't even get a McChicken anymore for a dollar, let alone a whole fresh protein pizza every day of the week that you could fit into your calories. If making one giant pizza for the week all in one shot is more your style, check out my sheet pan pizza where reheating it is just as good as when it was first made. Until next time, deuces.